Hello, welcome. In this video, we are starting our discussion on systems of equations. And we start by basically saying that when you're dealing with a system of equations, that means more than one equation, and you want to find if they have a common solution or if they meet, what you're really finding graphically is where those functions meet each other or where those equations meet each other. So graphically speaking, Right, graphically, we're looking for the intersection, intersection of the equations in your system. So you're looking to find where they meet. And for example, it could be linear, it could be nonlinear. Let's say we have a circle with a radius of three, and right, three squared is nine, and then we have some parabola y equals two x squared minus five x. What we could do to figure out what is the system, where does this system have a solution? This is a system, right? A collection of equations. We could graph them, and we can do it quickly on Desmos, or we could uh, plug in some inputs and outputs. But let's just do it quickly on Desmos so you can see. X squared plus Y squared equals nine. There's our circle. Then we have a parabola. Y equals two X squared minus five X you can see that the parabola and the circle meet each other. And they meet here at this point, here at this point, here at this point, and here. I feel like this is an interesting example because it shows you that sometimes graphing will help you solve a system in the fastest way. And we'll, and we'll see situations where graphing is not necessarily the easiest. But there's also an algebraic approach. So graphically, a system has a solution whenever those equations are meeting each other. Those are the solutions to the system. And if they don't meet, there is no solution. If they always meet, there are infinite solutions. But here, there are four solutions. And what we often do algebraically is we look at the same concepts. And we either solve it using substitution. So we can use substitution. These are, there are two basic algebra techniques that we look at, algebra, algebraic uh, approach. We have our substitution approach, substitution, and we have our elimination approach. Now we're ultimately trying to find the same thing. We're trying to find if we have a group of equations, when do they meet, which is another way of saying when do their x and y values, when are they the same? So for example, a classic uh, situation where substitution is to your advantage, even faster than graphing, would be, let's say you have it written out. So one of your variables is isolated. In this case, y equals x plus 4. Then let's say we have another uh, equation. We'll keep it linear. 2x plus 2y is 10. Now you could graph this. It wouldn't be. We'll, we'll graph it in a moment on Desmos. And it's going to be close in terms of speed because Desmos is so easy to use. But the idea right here is that, oh, this variable has already been isolated. I know that y in this equation is equal to x plus 4. They're the same thing. So I could substitute that equality in for y into the second equation easily because it's already been isolated. And that means that in our second equation, we could rewrite it as 2x plus 2 times y, which is really the same thing as x plus 4. Again, we're using that equality because we're finding when these two equations are the same, when they're meeting each other. So we can swap different parts of these equations in through substitution equals 10. And then we distribute and solve for x. 2x plus 2x plus 8 equals 10, which is 4x and subtract 8 is 2. So x is 1 half, and then we can say y equals x plus 4, so y equals 1 half plus 4, which is 4 and a half, and that means graphically that they meet at a point. Just like we did before, where there are four points, we now have a point where these two lines meet, and the point is 1 half comma 4 and a half, and we'll see that right now. So clear up these equations. So y equals x plus 4, there's our first equation, 2x plus 2y equals 10. There's our second equation, and there is where they meet. Now you might be saying, well, I could type that in pretty quickly into Desmos. Why would I want to do that algebraically? Well, you'll see. You'll see how these techniques certainly work in your favor, sometimes over graphing soon. Uh, also, it's interesting mathematically, and it gives you another problem-solving approach. 
The other approach that's really common is elimination. So elimination, let's say substitution, it's not already written in such a way that you want to substitute a value of a variable and you don't have an isolated variable. You could add or subtract the equations to eliminate variables and then solve. So I'll show you two ways because elimination I think is so cool. Uh, we have negative 4x plus 2y equals 10. That's our first equation. And then our second equation will be 4x plus y equals 20. So the amazing thing here is that we can actually add these equations and then we get a result which is consistent with this system. So if we add negative 4x plus 4x, that's 0. 2y plus y is 3y, and 10 plus 20 is 30, which means divide both sides by 3, y is 10, and then we could plug y back in. Now we use our substitution, plug it into either equation. I'll choose the second one. It looks a little bit easier. 4x plus 10 equals 20. So solve for x, 4x equals 20. 20 minus 10, 10, divide both sides by 4, and we get 2.5. So these two equations meet at the point 2.5 and 10. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by what I said, what I meant, not what I meant when I said that you add these equations and get another equation that's consistent with the system. It's a really important idea, and I'll show you what I mean. But first, let's just graph this so we can confirm that this makes sense. So we have negative 4x plus... 2y equals 10, and then we had 4x plus y equals 20. Scroll up here. So they do meet at 2 and a half, 10. Now, when we added these two equations, we got a new equation, and that was 3y equals 30. And just look at that. That equation, it's a new equation, is consistent with the system. So we have a new equation that's a part of that system. It meets the other two lines where they cross. It doesn't meet somewhere else. It's consistent with our solution. In other words, it's a part of the solution we already had, that intersection point. And then we divide up both sides by 3, and we got y equals 10. We get another line that's consistent with that solution. This is a super important idea, that you can add equations, and the result that you get is a part of that system. So in fact, you could say, if I eliminated one of these equations, boom, there's that new equation in the first one. That's This system has the same solution as our original system here, right? So you can add equations and you get a new equation that's, that's a part of a system that has equivalence. And there are other ways to do elimination. If you don't want to add opposites, you could do other things. Let me show you what I mean, and then we'll move on. If you started with negative 4x plus 2y equals 10, and the second equation was 4x plus y equals 20, you could, although it would be more work, double your second equation and then subtract. You would have negative 4x minus, this is minus 8x, so that's negative 12x. 2y minus 2 times y is 0, plus 0, and 10 minus 2 times 2 minus 4 is 6. So here, you know what? <laughs> 10, why did I put 2? 20, that's a 20, go back, that was a 20, sorry. 10 minus 2 times 20 is 10 minus 40, which is negative 30, and if you, div and if you solve for x, you get x is 2 and a half, and then you could replug in to get y equals 10, the same solution. So in fact, we get, we're able to do the same things, you can multiply by a non-zero number, add them, and get new equations that are consistent with your system. So here's another one, another equation that's consistent with that system. So there are, in fact, an infinite number of new equations we could create that have the same solution as the original system, as long as it just involves adding or subtracting multiples of one equation to the other. That is a central tenet to some of the work that we'll do in our future sections. Thank you.